What's going on guys? My name is Victor Sanchez and I am your host here at Jesus Over Everything. And if this is your first time visiting, I just want to say welcome. If you can do me a favor, drop a comment down below and let me know where you're watching from. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. It's God over everything. If it ain't of you, Lord, I don't want it. They can keep it. I put you over everything now. Now it ain't a secret. My heart belong to you. I let you work through me exclusive. I got everything that I pray for. I just pray I don't misuse it. Today I wanted to uh, talk about something that came up in church. And, you know, for the past four months or so, I've just felt a call to action. A call to action. That's the best way I can put it. I've made other videos regarding this. Um, a call to action. Um, but uh, today we spoke about something in church. Excuse me. And um, and I'll go over it a little bit. It's uh, coming out of the book of Acts. Um chapter 1 verse 1 through 11 is what we read over today but specifically in the first few verses um, you know starting off on um, where Jesus uh, ascends back into heaven um, there were some some really good uh, things to consider just in a few short verses um, but I wanted to to kind of go over that and then bring it all together let me read the scripture real quick um, it won't be long. Bear with me here. I'm going to uh, see if I can read this with you guys real quick. So this is uh, Acts 1 verse 6. Um, and I believe we're going to go into verse uh, 9 here, 10 maybe. Uh, let me get back over to this page. So it says verse 6, So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? Verse 7, he replied, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could go, sorry, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. And of course, if you're a believer and you're watching this, that is what we believe in, right? Jesus, not just in the ministry that he did while he was here, but also um, that he ascended into heaven um, and that he will return one day. But a, a part of this that I really want to point out, and uh, let me see if I can get you back over here, transition back here. So a part of this that I really wanted to point out is, is in verse 7 something that caught my eye right um, I have my notes here from this morning and in verse 7 in verse 6 uh, the, the disciples are asking him right um, they kept asking him Lord has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom they have all these questions because they've been following Jesus for so long and um, all of a sudden he's he's about to ascend into heaven He's essentially saying his goodbyes, and, and that brings another point here because this is some of the last words. I think it may be the last words that we have documented from Jesus Christ um, before he ascended into heaven. And uh, let me transition here back over here, and let me just take it a step further to see if that is, in fact, uh, what we have. Um, I, I believe so. Uh, these are the last words from our Father before he ascended into heaven. And uh, and so in verse 6, uh, for lack of better knowledge or better terms, um, you know, the disciples are, they're freaking out. Uh, Jesus is about to ascend to heaven and, and they're looking around and they're saying, hey, you know, our problems aren't solved yet. You know, we left our families, we left everything behind, we've been following you for, for so long and um, 
you know, what do you mean you're going to heaven? Like, are you, is this time to, to restore our kingdom, the kingdom of Israel? Um, and, and of course, Jesus' reply is, is amazing because um, it basically, the way, what I wrote down in my notes is, stay in your lane, right? Stay in your lane. That, that sounds harsh because as humans, we want answers. We want to know now. Um, but what I have here is stay in your lane. And basically, in verse 7, he says, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. And so what he's saying is he's about to give them instruction on what they are to do. Um, but he's saying that that's not something they should be concerning themselves over. And why is that important? That's very important for us because as believers, um, we have problems. We have, we're going through issues, whether it be financial issues, medical issues, uh, relational issues, physical issues. Uh, we're going through our own problems. We're, we're stuck where verse 6 is at, right? We're stuck where verse 6 is at. And to, today, I heard this message at church, and I'm trying my best not to butcher it uh, because the speaker that we had, uh, DeLeon Bennett, uh, he's an amazing speaker, and he was able to illustrate this so well, and I thought it was so rich. Um, uh, and actually, I'm going to put a link in the, in the description below of this message um, as soon as I, I locate it and when I upload this video, I'll put that in the description below so that you can watch this message yourself because it was so good. It was so rich. Um, and uh, I'm trying not to butcher it, but what I took from it, I'm giving you my take from it. And then when you hear these words of God, right, the words that I just read from Scripture, and you're hearing my interpretation of it, when I post the link in the description, if you if you go over to that link and you watch that that video, um, you will hear uh, De Leon's uh, own spin on, on what he was giving us, he was delivering to us. But in this channel, we encourage you, we want you to listen, to read the Word of God, and then come up with your own conclusion. What is God telling you? Um, not, not what other people are saying, what is God speaking to you through these messages? Um, and so... I believe that in verse 6, that is most of us. We're stuck in verse 6, and we're asking God, has the time come for you to free, and fill in the blank, free me from this addiction, free me from this illness, free me from this time of, of not having enough? Um, you know, you fill in the blank. I think a lot of us are stuck there. And, uh, and his reply is amazing because he says the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. Now, as human beings, um, you know, that's, that's tough. That is a tough pill to swallow, especially when you're going through something. Um, some of us are going through good times, and some of us are going through horrific times. And if that's you today, I love you. I'm so sorry that you're going through that. I'm you know, I'm 39 years old, and I have been through my fair share of, of hell on earth. And so if that's you today, I'm so sorry that you're going through that. But I encourage you to believe in the one who can solve it all. And, and believe in the one whose timing is perfect. And it may not feel like the perfect timing right now, especially if you're in the midst of it. Um, but God is working things together for you. And he promises that. And so, but today here, I wanted to move on going into verse 8. Um, he, he gives us, what I wrote down here that he gives us is the answers to our problems, right? Verse 6 is our problems. Verse 7 is, hey, don't worry about the timing. That belongs to God. And verse 8 is the provision, right? The, the answer to our problems. He said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness, my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Um, that's really important. It's really, really important for us, uh, especially as believers. And that's where I feel like it's the call of action, right? Um, he, he gave us the he gave us what to do in the meantime. Um, you know, we're waiting for verse six 
to be resolved. Um, he's telling us, don't worry about when that's going to happen. But in the meantime, verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so verse 8 is what we've been called to do as believers. And so verse 9 I um, just want to break this down to you real quick. This is where I really feel the call to action because um, he says, After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching and they could no longer see him. Um, can you imagine just you're having this conversation? Jesus is giving you his final words and then he's taken up into a cloud and, and you're just staring, right? And watching as, as he ascends into heaven. And to the point where you can no longer see him. And then it says, verse 10, As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, Why are you standing? It says, uh, Why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. And why is that a call to action? The key question here is posed in verse 11. It says, men of Galilee, you fill in the blank, men of Texas, men of New York, men of the United States, men of this world, men of Israel, men of Africa, men of whatever country, you fill in the blank, right? It's talking to us. Um, why are you standing here staring into heaven? In other words, wh why are you still staring? Now, the question is obvious, right? If you're a human being and you just watch Jesus ascend into heaven, of course you're sitting there in amazement. Um, just, wow, what, what did I just witness? Um, but the question that is posed immediately after that is, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Essentially saying, hey, you have a job to do. Quit looking into heaven because you have a job to do, right? And so immediately, it's amazing because as they're still in the moment, two white robed men suddenly stood among them, which are angels, and just ask them, why are you standing here staring to heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven the same way you saw him go. And so for us believers, um, I just feel like that's a call to action. It's a call for us as believers to um, go and do something. If you're watching this channel and you're new to being a believer, maybe this is your first exposure Um you know, you, you've got some things that you have to work on and work out between you and God. Um, but if you're a believer and you've, you've been a believer and you've been uh, receiving and receiving and receiving what God has to offer, you've been going to church, you've been receiving the goodness of God, you've seen the changes in your life, and you've been a beneficiary of Christ living inside of you, that's amazing. But you need to put it into action. He didn't just call us to receive, but he's asked us to preach his word, to be his witnesses throughout the world, to the ends of the earth. Now, that means that you, wherever you're at, whatever stage you have, whatever, um, if you're a teacher, if you're a fireman, if you're a police officer, if you're a construction worker, and you're watching this, if you're a mechanic, uh, if you are a plumber, a steel worker, whatever you are, you have an area of influence. And if you're a believer and you're, if you've been benefiting from having Jesus living inside of you, it is our responsibility to tell others, to witness to others about the goodness of God. I thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I just wanted to get that out there. It's a call to action. It's, it's part of 
coming to Jesus. It's part of accepting Him as Lord and Savior. Um, we have been tasked with the Great Commission. We have been tasked to go and make disciples. Go and preach the Word of God to others. Um, that is our responsibility as believers. Um, and for it, we will receive eternal life from the one who can give it. And so before you go, I want to bless you. I want to pray for you. And uh, without further ado, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I ask, Lord Father, that you bless all who are listening, anyone who's, who's this message and this prayer reaches their ears, Father. I pray, Lord Father, that you bless them beyond anything they might ask or think, Father. Lord, I pray that first, first and foremost, Father God, that you bless them internally, that you bless their spirit, that you bless their mind, that you give them a fresh anointing for all who are believers, Lord Father. I pray that you give them a conviction, Holy Spirit, to go and make disciples. Lord Father, in these days that we're living in, I just feel like there's no room for sitting on the bench. There's no room for just being a lukewarm church as you describe in the in the book of Revelation, Father. I feel like we should go out and make disciples. We should go out and do the things that you called us to do. And we thank you, Father, for giving each and every one of us an opportunity and a platform to be able to do these things. Now I pray, Holy Spirit, that you come upon us and that you give us the courage and the wisdom and the discernment to be able to preach your word. Father, I pray that everyone who receives that, Father God, everyone who would open their heart, their mind to receive that, that you pour it out on them, Father. And I pray, Father, that you bless their health. Lord, Father, that any sickness or disease that is in their body, Father, we bind it all in Jesus' name, Father. I pray that at the sound of this prayer, Father, at the receiving of the Holy Spirit that you were pouring out even in this very time, at their very place where they're at, Lord Father. I pray that they receive it and that the Holy Spirit can come upon them heavily and that any disease, anything that is in their body, we bind it in Jesus' name and we pray, Lord Father, that that be casted out in Jesus' name. We speak against anything that is in our bodies that is not of you, Father, and we speak it in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for everyone who may have a financial burden Father, that is watching this, that, Father, we know what this economy is doing to families. We know what this economy is doing to the middle class, to the lower middle class. Father, it is something that is not easy to, to debate or easy to combat as, as a believer. Uh, Father, we, we are many people that are trying to make an honest living and to work hard for our families. Father, I pray that you bless each and every one who is in that situation, Father, with an abundance, an abundance, Father God, of finances and resources and opportunities, Father, to be able to provide for their families, Lord. Father, I pray that each and every person that is here listening, Father, that they can do something different that they haven't done before, Father, that they can uh, reevaluate their walk with you and whether it's um, reaching out to people and talking to them about it, about you witnessing to them, Father, or maybe it's a believer who, who's never tithed before, never given you a true tithe, Father. I'm not a believer of making men rich. I'm not a believer of, of uh, you know, spending money for other people, but I am a believer in giving you your tithe, Father God, your true 10%, Lord. And I pray and I encourage everyone here to tithe to their local churches, to sow that seed and to see what you will do for them, Father, and in return, Lord. And, and as believers, we give without any resentment, without any um, confusion in our heart. We give gladly, Father, for your kingdom, Lord, for the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord. We pray over our finances and we give, Father, for your kingdom, Lord. Father, let us uh, test you in this. It says in the scriptures, test me in this and see. And Father, this is the one and only scripture where you ask us to test you, Father. And I just pray, Lord Father, 
that my brothers and sisters that are watching, that are listening, that they would give of your of their finances to your kingdom, that they would sow a seed. Father, we often go out and we spend money on in different things, different some some things are not so great, Lord, but some things, Father, are good and they're good for our families, Lord. But I pray that if they haven't tasted and seen that the Lord is good, Father, that they sow a seed into your kingdom and that they wait and see what you will do with that, Father. Father, in, in the scriptures and in the parable of, of the seeds and scattering seed, Father, you, uh, the sower receives a hundredfold of what they cast out, Father. And I just pray, Lord, Father, that you help each and every one who sows a seed into your kingdom, Lord. Father, we love you and we thank you for all that you give us. We pray for this country. We pray for our leadership. We pray for our safety, Father God. And we pray for any and all who are being oppressed by terrorists, by groups that are that are evil, Father, that are from the enemy. Lord, Father, we just pray that everyone come to know you as their Lord and Savior and that they can one day see and know and understand that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, we thank you for this all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you all for watching. Um, I know it was a long video. I, I intended for it to be a lot shorter, but um, thank you guys. I pray that this blesses you and we'll see you again soon.